Now the final type of solution for food and fiber is the environment type solutions. Coming up with a space or um, an environment that meets the solution to a problem. Now again, looking at examples here in years five and six, investigating and defining of course starts their process. But one of the examples here is around creating a walled garden. So seeing what improvements could be made to their environment, their physical environment, by having plants on the walls. Would that then make the space cooler by having this process? Would it increase the oxygen in the space? Would it increase the carbon dioxide? They may be things that they need to consider as part of their um, evaluation of their solutions. Would it improve the aesthetics of their environment? And of course, does it improve their food production through various mechanisms? So these are different things that they can explore one of the examples I give is creating an aquaponics um, solution, which is having a fish tank above a hydroponics tank. So the waste from the fish tank, the, um, the excrement from the fish, is then used as nutrients in the water dripping down onto the plants, um, which is then filtered through the plants, and then the clean water is then pumped back up to the fish tank. So it creates a nice um, system that improves the fish produc production. Normally in primary schools we don't actually harvest the fish, but we can certainly use the process to produce the plants. And some schools have actually set up very large systems of these, where it involves um, dozens of tanks and dozens of fish tanks and so forth, um, often outside, and can be quite complex and involved. So. These are processes that you can explore with your students that are quite complex and advanced, but they can normally involve more expertise than you may be able to have yourself. So bringing in outside experts, parents, local industries, lots and lots of people in the community are more than willing to help with student projects and developing um, design challenges and activities within schools. So while you may not have the expertise yourself to do many of these um, design and technology type activities, sewing, metalwork, uh, woodwork, there are lots of experts that are more than willing to come in and help from the local community, from the parents, from local men's shed, the sewing groups. They have a wealth of um, capability to enhance the learning of your students. So don't neglect all of those additional sources and relying just upon your own capabilities, as great as they may be, doesn't provide the full benefits that you can give to your students by incorporating community activities. And this can assist your students too in building their understanding of the importance of design and technology and food production as part of that but also of other types of design engineered solutions and so forth, all contributing to their understanding of the importance of technology in their lives and in the world. And your final challenge is to consider design and technology and food and fire production in particular in how it meets the rationale of the subject, why the subject exists. And your challenge is to describe in relation to food and fire production how what you are doing with your students can achieve that rationale.